Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Cast. I'm your host, Seishu, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Bill Holland, who's a wedding photographer and a blogger now, uh, based out of Denver, outside of Denver, I guess, Boulder, Colorado. Um, so, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Seishu. I, I, uh, I completely yes. effed up the, the the place, your location, but hey, <laughs> listen, I got the state right. <laughs> yeah, it, indeed, it's kind of funny. It's uh, you know, people who bol- uh, who live in Boulder oftentimes will stay in Boulder County, and people who live in Denver really just tend to to stay there unless they're you know everyone heads to the mountains. But uh, they're <laughs> two very different communities. Now, you guys were out here on the East Coast. You were based in Virginia, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes. And so you've just moved about two years ago out to, to Boulder, Colorado, uh, and you continue to be wedding photographers, correct? Yes, absolutely. Uh, but you've launched into this really wonderful blog that, that caught my eye. It's called The Art of Delight. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted you to be here on the show is because I wanted to ask you, essentially, why did you begin this blog? What was what was the motivation to, to even start the blog? Who is it for? Oh, sure. Well, the intended audience is other creatives, not just photographers, not just people within the wedding industry, although they tend to be the heaviest readers, sure. but really anyone who makes a living creating art. Uh, and... You know, it was really just my opportunity to give back in a way, because when we first started out, uh, so many people helped us out and offered uh, such specific advice and, you know, really uh, enabled us to uh, make our own mistakes rather than repeating the mistakes of others. Mm -hmm. And uh, we thought if there's a way that we can give back to the community, you know, we could do that. A little bit of history on that, you know, when we were married back in 2001, we had a wonderful experience with our wedding photographer and loved the photos. I mean, he was, it was amazing. It just, you know, as budding wedding photographers ourselves, you know, it was something that was really important to us. But there was one aspect of the experience when it came to delivery that was, we'll say, less than optimal. And this is back in the days when, you know, people would get four by six proofs. And we had a guaranteed set number of proofs that we were given, and I think it was some 250 or something like that. And when we got the books, the albums in which they, they came, uh, we were looking through them at night, and, and it was like, wow, this is awesome. And, oh, look at that. And, you know, it's exactly what, you know, what your clients do when, when they look at your photos. And uh, we read his letter at the end, and, sa- and he said, uh, there were just so many good ones, I couldn't narrow it down. So uh, here are your options. If you'd like, you can um, you can keep them, keep the extras, and here's how much the balance will be to you know for those additional ones, or you can take out 150 or so and return them. And you know, obviously, you know, within um, his, you know, within the contract in, that we had, that would make sense by the by the letter of the law, as it were. But from an experiential standpoint, it was something that we had, um, you know, the very, very positive experience of looking at the imagery, followed by a really poor um, uh, decision. You know, it was was a real Sophie's choice. We either had to pay more or we had to get rid of some of the images. And that really informed how we decided to uh, form Holland Photo Arts in that all of our policies and all of our procedures we're prefaced with the question of how will this make our clients feel and does it solve a particular problem that our clients have? And it's not to say that we didn't make mistakes along the way. Of course we did. But that overriding philosophy served us really well and, and helped us get off the ground and successful sooner than, uh, than we might have otherwise. Okay. And, and the impetus, I guess, for the blog, though, what was that? I mean, is it the idea that you would revisit some of those uh, times when things may have not gone so well for you guys and you've figured out, well, this would would have been the optional or optimal response? Or is it more like, OK, no, this is really we're starting from scratch. We're really going to tell mm-hmm. people exactly what they really should be doing uh, and helping their clients. I think a lot of the early posts came from um, talks with other creatives. 
Uh, at first, at first, it was uh, other photographers, and then uh, wedding planners and other people started reaching out to us because we had become known, uh, you know, within our circles and when, within the industry for the uh, customer experience that we had been designing, you know, for for our clients, and it was a way that we had differentiated ourselves. Uh, so our friends would come back to us and say, hey, I've got this issue, you know, a, a client's really unhappy, you know, here's what's going on, do you have any advice for me, or, um, you know, do you, I just can't figure out how to word this email, it's like, you know, this is what I want to say, but I, I just don't know what to, to, what to say there, and this happened over and over and over again. And, you know, it was wonderful being able to help, you know, because, you know, in this industry, you give and, and you receive and, and you know, and, and, and everyone learns from one another. Sure. But I thought, oh, I'm only helping one person here, uh, you know, or, or, you know, or a couple of you know, people in this instance. Why not take some of these experiences, strip out all of the personal, uh, uh, personally identifying information, and talk about it on on a on a web, on, on the uh, on the blog, mm -hmm. so that you know you can identify a core problem, what happened up to that point, and an ideal solution you know for it. So the the whole point there was that you not only got the what to do, but the why and the how which I felt was really important in terms of educating other creatives so that they could learn, you know, learn from that and say, okay, well, here's not just an example, but here, is, here are specific ways that I can apply that as a creative to what it is that I do. The, the bottom line in all of this and, and, and the whole reason why I do you know, The Art of Delight, which is actually a consultancy as well as a, as a blog, I do have you know clients that that I work with on a regular basis that have me on on retainer um, you know basis was that no creative goes into business I won't say no few creatives go into business to be business people they go into business to be uh, creative and to have and to have that uh, creative freedom to do what it is that they want to do that's why they don't work for Wells Fargo or FedEx or you know some large you know company where you always ask, have to ask permission in order to create your art. That's in right. this case, your your clients are giving you money and say, please go create your art, you know, and and you know, and do that. But at the same time, uh, you know, they don't necessarily want to deal with all of the other trappings of working with uh, clients. In that regard, they're kind of. Uh, a necessary evil, as it were. You know, they're they're the people that pay your bills. Um, you know, so you have to can you know pay attention to them. But it's kind of outside of creating your art. So the art of delight serves to reduce all of those little friction points that creatives might have between them and their customers and their clients. So that when they do create art, it's a delight for everyone. The creative gets to have their freedom. The client gets an amazing experience, and everyone leaves happy. Indeed, indeed. Uh, from your experiences in the fa past, let's say three or four years, uh, dealing with photographers, because that's my core audience at Tiffin Box. What would you say uh, is sort of like the, the most common complaint from photographers in terms of working with clients? I would say failure to set expectations. Ah, and it's not because the intent wasn't there. Uh, but I think, you know, in, in the design world, and this is where I get my, my expertise, before coming into uh, Holland Photo Arts and, and creating that company with Anne, mm -hmm. uh, I worked as a front-end web developer and then became a, a usability specialist. I introduced user-centered design to our agency at the time. Uh, so, you know, we completely revamped our methodology. You know, we in introduced usability testing and all of the, the various tools to you know, actually test our designs to make sure that they were usable. So, and one of the, one of the things that, that you say, you know, as a, as a designer in that regard is you are not your client. And what that means is that, you know, you could be a programmer, you could be a graphic designer, you could be a photographer, but you don't necessarily know what your client is thinking because you're not them. You can have empathy, and it's important to have empathy. That's kind of a key thing you know, to, in, in our field. But it's even better to know 
through research and to understand your clients and exactly where they're uh, where they're coming from. And that's why when we started Holland for Art, Photo Arts, we did the, uh, the research necessary to really thoroughly understand our clients. And going back to the failed expectations, the photographers more often than not are thinking, well, you know, what I'm saying in this email should be inherently obvious to everyone. But it may or may not be because photographers have certain domain knowledge about a particular uh, subject that gives them an edge over their clients. So when they're writing an email or you know, talking about you know, something on, the, on their phone or writing copy for their web page, they, they think they're writing for their audience. And to a large degree, they are. But they're not necessarily doing so in a way that says, uh, that answers all of their clients' questions. So, you know, a lot of it is just, you know, missed deadlines or, you know, style differences or, hey, I thought you were going to get this, but you got that. And, and all of these little things because of a simple misunderstanding that if it had been communicated more effectively, it would have uh, been prevented in the first place. How does one learn to do that, learn to communicate effectively? Um, I mean, thanks to your blog, there are some, uh, I guess, vignettes into how you know, one can go about it and what to do, what to say kind of things. But, mm -hmm. uh, but there's so many situations. I mean, there's so many factors involved, you know, uh, whether it's a portrait client or a, a wedding client or a client who's working for, you know, like a commercial client uh, does, does not want to hear from you in that, in a specific tone of voice that, that your, your emails should really speak, you know, you know, more authoritatively perhaps, uh, you know, it, it all depends on, you know, who's receiving it. I mean, as you said, mm -hmm. you're not your client. Okay, then what? Like, how yeah. do you how do you think like your client, or how would your how would you like to, I guess, produce emails or a communication that a prospective client or a client, a, a current client, will receive it and say, "Wow, this person really gets me." Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think the the first and the and the fastest way is simply to hire me. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I can beyond, check that off now. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, but the, but there are a lot of things that that you can do, you know, with without that simply by learning from what other people are doing. I don't know if you remember back in the old uh DWF days, you know, when it was a really vibrant uh post there was a Southern California photographer named uh Ray Prevost. Oh, and yeah. um Ray was a master at wordsmithing emails. You know, if anyone had a question about how to, to do something, yeah. uh, how to respond to a client, they would ask Ray and he would come up with the perfect response. I learned a lot from him. He doesn't know this, but I, uh, well, but now he, he but does. <laughs> hopefully he does now. Um, it was the, the way that he, he wrote. And I think if you, if you looked and examined the words and the phrases and he explained why he said what he did, you know, if you really sat down and studied that, you understood, uh, you know, specifically, you know, why certain things were said in a certain way, uh, and I really took that to heart. And frankly, it just takes practice. And the second thing, other than simply being observant to what other people do, that are, you know, it's it's like uh, when I go skiing, for example, I try to go skiing with people that are better than I am. And the reason for that is uh, it always pushes me to to get better. If I ski with people that aren't as good as as I am, I don't push myself as much. So the same thing you know applies in this in this particular instance. If you surround yourself with pe with people that are better than you, you always have something to push uh, push for, and you know, or you have specific examples for how to uh, how to get there. I think the second thing that's really, really key, um, and it's boy, it's hard when a client's angry, you know, because all you want to do is lash out. And certainly, you know, I've been guilty of, of that too. It's like, God, you know, why didn't they read their contract? And, you know, geez, what's going on? You know, they should have known better. And we sent them three emails. And but having empathy for the client and the cir circumstances under which they're operating is so key. You have to have it. Um, and, and practicing that as well. 
on a constant basis. The, uh, and I could, I could speak for an hour just on developing uh, empathy. And if any of your viewers uh, you know, practice meditation, for example, that's a really good way of you know, learning uh, empathy you know, as well. But another way to, to do this, uh, the third component, is simply by being an observant consumer. And when I say that, think about the experiences that you have as a consumer when you're going grocery shopping and you're banking, and really pay close attention to how um, all of these interfaces are designed to create delight, or they're ill-designed and end up creating frustration. Quick example. Uh, if you're a Wells Fargo customer, you could uh, go to their ATM. And if you're a fairly frequent ATM user, uh, you'll notice that when you put in your card, it knows that most of the time you're there to deposit a check. So as you enter your uh, four-digit PIN, there's a green button next to that it, that says essentially sign in and deposit a check. So it's one less step that you have to deal with. You know, and, and that's because Wells Fargo took the time to observe its customers and help them along the way. People's goal isn't to spend time in an ATM during the day. Their time is to deposit, their goal is to deposit a check, get the hell out of there, and get on with life. Uh, so that's, you know, if you, if you pay attention to those things as a consumer, you can kind of think about what things do my clients want to see? And what circumstances are they, you know, in which they, they're operating? Like, you know, let's take, you know, photography, for example. Um, most of us will deliver uh, digital files, you know, in a, particular, uh, in a particular way. But we don't have a whole lot of control over the environment in which people will view them. So we kind of have to think about, uh, are, they, are they downloading them? Are they uh, looking at them at home? Are they looking at them at work? Is it on a laptop? All of these different things over which a photographer has no control. It's probably on a, on, a, um, a, on a monitor that hasn't been calibrated. It could be too bright or too dim, and you, know, you never really know. Right. And you, you can't make excuses about that because the client doesn't care. They don't want to have to go and calibrate their monitor. Um, so, you know, it's important to to consider all of these things and, and you know, w when you're downloading and say, well, what, what are those file sizes like? You know, are, are, you know are, are you requiring them to download everything all at once? Does it take two hours? Is the server slow? Um, you know, or can I make these into, you know, smaller, more manageable chunks so they can, you know, download? Or if they're on a phone, what, you know, so it, context is really important in that regard. Again, a huge new field, not new, but a huge field of study about human factors uh, about that. And, and that's, you know, because that's the background that I have, I was able to bring that into the business practices. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Uh, there's one thing that I think you mentioned where, uh, you know, obviously with the, with the ways uh, a photographer, in my case, would go back and forth with the client, Mm -hmm. um, a lot of photographers these days are using systems, uh, using systems uh, helped along by uh, applications like ShootQ or 17 Hats or mm -hmm. Tave. Uh, all of these can, I guess, in some ways help uh, that help uh, close that communication gap that sometimes appears uh, between uh, a, a client and, a, and an artist or a creative. Uh, mm -hmm. w would you suggest uh, sort of honing in on on that process and and figuring out exactly uh, from the minute the phone rings for the first time till you know you you let go of the the album into their hands and you say good luck have a great life uh i mean is there a certain mindset that you would recommend people have in terms of approaching it that way or would you suggest other ways well i i you know in terms of testing the way that you do things you don't have to go and, and you know hire a usability lab to to test your your process, but you can grab some of your friends or former clients, uh, you know family members, and kind of enlist their help with a vignette of certain uh, certain aspects of it. It's a you know certainly you know with a past client you can go through and, and take the en entire experience 
and walk through certain aspects of it, but it's much harder to do that after the fact. Uh, so I would I would recommend simply asking, uh, you know, with uh, you know various uh, you know people, uh, you know, what does that um, is, is that uh, audio bothering you? No, Can you hear I'm that? Good. I'm okay, good. Good, yeah. uh, good deal. Um, so. Uh, you know that that usability testing is kind of a, a key thing there, and just you know finding out does this website uh, you know make sense to you? If if this is your task, are you able to accomplish it? If you're using ShootQ, for example, uh, do think about the personalization for um, uh, you know for sending out invoices. Is it an in uh, a really formal kind of sterile? Hey, you know, three thousand dollar payment is due. Pay me now, sucker. You know, kind of, kind of thing. <laughs> or is it, um, you know, hey, I hope you're doing well. Or you know, and including you know the name and, and things like ShootQ has variables where you can you know do something like that. Uh, I hope you're doing well, and you know, wedding planning is going great for you. Um, you know, as always, you know, we're we're here to answer whatever questions you might have. Um, you know, in, in the meantime, as you may remember, your you know final payment of three thousand dollars is coming due. Uh, here's an address uh, to which you can you know mail your check, or here's a, a link to um, you know make the payment uh, via your favorite plastic. Um, you know, and just in, injecting a little bit of humor and a little bit of personality into all of the little things that you do when you, uh, you know, when you're utilizing technology can make a big difference. So you just kind of think about it on 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 the client's end. You know, one one uh, great example, a fantastic example of what this might uh, look like. You know, uh, is you know you can you can Google CD now. Uh, or CD Baby, rather. I'm sorry, CD Baby. Uh, back when people actually bought uh, CDs, but uh, just Google it and 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 look for the CD uh, Baby shipping email. That that should be a good uh, query string. And it just read it. It's fun. You know, you don't even have to uh, have ordered anything from it. But you know, if you you can look at that and say, if I received this email after buying something, that would make me feel good. Right. And that's the whole point of every touch point, every interaction that your client has with you, it's important for them to feel good. Put, take the opportunity to put a smile on, on their face, especially when you're asking for money. Uh, you know? um, but, but be of service. You know, it, one of the things in, you, know, you may or may not know in, in Boulder, it's, it's kind of like a little miniature Silicon Valley in, in, in one regard. Is, you know, we've got a lot of startups here. Mm -hmm. And one of the basic tenets in the community is give before you get. So you don't have a ton of people around here asking for this, that, and the other thing. Obviously, you do. But people's first inclination is to say, how can I help you? And if you can, if you can instill that in the way that you operate and, and, and the way that you do business, your first instinct is to be of service to your client and find out how you can help them. And they'll, they'll tell you uh, and you know, take that and just in the and and run with it. And if it's a little bit above and beyond what you you know might have uh, otherwise included or something like that, but it's not a, you know a huge deal. It's not you know you're not spending thousands of dollars. To, to, you know, that could be worth it. You know, just just to take the time and make them you know happy. The same thing with vendor images. You know, for example, there's a lot of back and forth among photographer communities of. Um, you know, should you give uh, you know photos for free to other wedding pros associated with a wedding? Well, here's, but at the same time, you know, and you know, some photographers will say, "Oh no, no, you know, they they you know they have to pay you know fifty bucks or a hundred dollars or you know whatever. It doesn't really matter. Ninety nine cents for it, but." Uh, and and, the, and they're they're failing to think about what that looks like on the on the tail end. Is that that baker who's a fantastic. Uh, cake maker and, and decorator relies on the photographer to make their art to make the photog make the baker look good, um, but at the same time, if the baker were to bring in their own photographer, the hired pro would be like, "What are you doing? You're you're not allowed to be here." So which is it? You know. So it just think about what uh, what these ex experiences are like from other people and 
you know, first and foremost, try to be of service. Try to identify what problem and solve it if you can. And if you can't, um, maybe there's a resource that you can point them to who can. Excellent. Well, that's a great way to sort of wrap things up. I want to thank you, Bill, well, for coming on. And I mean, I could go on and ask you more questions, but uh, I want people to go hit the site. It's called theartofdelight.com, uh, theartofdelight.com. Mm -hmm. And check out the blog posts. I mean, really skim back all the way to the very beginning. And I think you'll really, really enjoy the way Bill writes. Um, and the information is not just uh, not just timely, but it's useful. You know, you're gonna put it to use. You're gonna look at it and you go, "Wow, how can how can I blend this into my business?" Uh, I think that's what got me all excited. To be honest with you, Bill, is like I was like, "Wow, I really need to read this." I mean, this is a fantastic resource. To be honest with you, I really I'm want. So yeah, I, I really really. I'm excited uh, that you started this because I was like, wow, where, is, where have you been, Bill? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, it's 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 so good. Uh, no pressure, but keep producing great blog posts and I'm happy to promote it on, on Tiffin Box and other uh, uh, social media sites as well. Um, but if you have, if my audience has any questions, direct questions uh, to you, would that be okay mm -hmm. for them to approach you directly? Of course, okay. yeah. By by all means, they, you know, my contact information is is on the blog. Uh, the the uh, menu items are at the at the very top, and uh, the blog goes back um, two and a half years. So uh, there's plenty there's of there's a lot content of reading to, look to do. At. Yeah. You yes. Do. Bill, thank you so much for joining me today. It was the pleasure was mine, Seshu. Thank you so much. Enjoy your afternoon. Take care. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. Mm -hmm.